Hello everybody and welcome to my special episode about the no frills weather. It's a special episode that I have promised you for a long time, but I finally found time to record it. I'm sitting outside in the sun um, because it's, it's, it's such a beautiful day today that I wanted to record in the sun this morning. So, the no frills weather. Most of you will know the pattern. It's from Petite Knit. It's one of her earlier patterns. And I do think you see the difference in her pattern writing from her earlier and her more, re more recent uh, patterns, but um, I will still give uh, my opinion. The No Frill sweater is uh, the first sweater I've made uh, for a uh, sweater knitted in the round on circular needles, so I still had to learn a lot at that time. Um, this is my first No Frill sweater and my first sweater in the round. Um, I used Soft Gratte from Katja Concept. It's a pure uh, synthetic yarn and um, it's, yeah, um, it's quite cheap, but you see it. But it was the best thing at that time to try something new, because if I try something new, I don't want to try something with a really expensive yarn that I'm afraid to mess up. Even though you can undo a sweater, it's, yeah, just doesn't feel right to use expensive yarn for something completely new. Um, so this was my first sweater in the round, which meant that I had to learn to do the increases, because uh, when you knit flat, your increases are actually hidden in your seam. So uh, I followed her written uh, explanation, and that just didn't turn out. You can see, if I put my hands behind it, that you see a lot of holes. And that's something uh, that I've noticed if I follow the way she writes it, I get holes. It's something I've seen with MB Makes as well, I will link her video. Uh, when she gave her overview of the 2022 makes, she showed one of the petite knit, uh, petite knit sweaters which, when she also had holes in. So I think it's, yeah, it might be something uh, with the way she explains it. I would recommend you to go and have a look at the uh, videos of Stephen West. He explains to make the make one left and make one right much better and then you will have uh, a better basic uh, knowledge to start your sweater. Or uh, just knit something of the Knit Poor Girl, she explains it really well as well. Um, so this is my first one, it pills a lot and like because it's synthetic it doesn't, uh, well the fabric isn't as I would like to have it, so I might uh, yeah, throw this one away, I'm not sure yet, but you will see in my next podcast episode, because I will introduce a new section called um, the uh, what has left my wardrobe uh, section, because I'm trying to reduce my wardrobe and uh, I will just take that as an extra section in my uh, podcast episodes. So that's my first one. I did make a second one, and the second one is this one in Holst Coast. The label I've uh, attached to uh, be uh, more, yeah, to make more clear what is the back is, has just uh, gotten loose, but I will attach it later today. Holst Coast is a mixture of cotton and merino. I really, really like that yarn. So the yarn is a plus, and I use a different explanation for the. Um, oh boy, the sun doesn't cooperate. Uh, for the uh, make one left, make one right, ah, now you can see it. Uh, so it's a really neat uh, raglan instead uh, of a holy one. So I really like this one. Um, it's one that I made last year, I've worn it quite a lot, I will still wear it this year. Um, I will post some pictures because it really shows uh, a little bit of the issue with the sweater and it's an issue that has to do with the raglan. Uh, it's something that is common for a raglan pattern, is that your neckline kind of widens uh, when wearing it. So you will see that my t-shirt pops out. I was on a holiday and I didn't have any matching t-shirts anymore, so it's kind of a strange uh, view. But that's something you can have with a raglan pattern. So uh, that's something uh, I wanted to uh, say as well about the pattern. The Holst Coast was ordered from Denmark, from the Holst side which is uh, more, uh, yeah, which is really affordable and the shipping is as expensive as shipping from the Netherlands or France to Belgium. So it doesn't make any difference and um, 
yeah, you have the cones there which make it really, really affordable. I think it's 33 or 35 euros for a cone and maybe less than a cone. I held the yarn double for this one, um, so yeah, it's really nice. It's my favorite no frill sweater. Uh, what I want to do next is I don't want to make any more no frill sweaters anymore because I want to try different patterns that might not have the neckline thing. Uh, so I noticed that the Semper sweater from the Mid Pro Girl shouldn't have it, so I want to make that one. But for, before starting that one, I want to uh, wait until my stash reduces a bit and I can buy some more of the Holst Coast. But another pattern I want to try is the Confluence sweater from uh, Neon and Neutrals from Lina magazine. And that one is uh, ready to cast on. I'm not sure when because I have 5,000 plans in my head, but I have the yarn and the pattern for that one. So we'll keep you posted. So uh, that was my short special episode about the no frill sweater. Um, please feel free to give me any recommendations concerning other raglan uh, patterns or concerning cotton merino blends because that's a blend that I really want to use more. So please give me any recommendations and uh, yeah, see you next time.